First of all, assalamualaikum and good morning to our honourable speaker and participants. Thank you for joining our workshop entitled Planning the Design of Online Learning uh, this morning. Okay, um, so first and foremost, I would like to introduce our um, honourable speaker. Dr. Nubiha A. Shukur, uh, she is a senior lecturer from the Department of Education of Science, Mathematics and Multimedia Creative School of Education, UTM. She is also the Deputy Director, Teaching and Learning uh, 2020 until now, uh, and the Center for Academic Leadership, uh, UTM lead. She holds her Doctor of Philosophy in Educational uh, Technology, University of Technology, Malaysia. And her professional contribution, she is Ahli Majlis Ketua Ketua Penyelaras e Pembelajaran or MIPTA 2018 until 2019. She is also Task Force Member for Transformacy Program Academic University Awam. And uh, she also Technical Task Force for Teaching Excellence System. So uh, without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Norbiha Ishuko to start her sharing. So for those uh, participants who are uh would like to ask the question you can unmute your microphone or you can text in the chat room so i pass to you uh dr nabiha okay assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, and very good morning uh, thank you Inimas, for having me here i think uh, this is uh, the second time uh that i've uh, that i'm here i think initially i shared uh, a little bit about online learning during pandemic, uh, I believe. Uh, however, today I'm going to talk about uh, something not really similar. However, it is a uh, more detail compared to what I have shared before. So it is about uh, planning and designing for uh, online learning. Uh, and I will briefly cover uh, number one is um, online learning versus emergency remote teaching. And I, uh, because I think that is very important for us to first understand what is online learning. Uh, and then uh, we can uh, start uh, going uh, a little bit in depth about designing uh, or planning uh, our own uh, online learning. Now, if you talk about online learning, usually what we uh, what come across uh, in our mind is that we know that online learning enables uh, learning anytime, learning anywhere and learning anyhow. However, these uh, three terminologies doesn't really reflect what online learning is uh, because uh, what online this, these are only the properties uh, or uh, what we say that um, what online learning can do. It doesn't really reflect what online learning is. Uh, of course, online learning allows you to learn anytime, anywhere, and anyhow. Um, and if you see on, it is somehow, um, we can see that this is a little bit similar with uh, what this uh, emergency remote teaching is, uh, because it allows you to learn anytime, anywhere, and anyhow. Um, however, if we see here, uh, emergency remote teaching uh, is usually the cost of action continue teaching in a remote manner. So, and it's usually temporary in behavior. And what is over at the very back of our mind, we were thinking back to how we were uh, um, emergency, emergency remote teaching, because we always have this mindset in mind, okay, this is temporary. I'm go back to how I was before. Uh, and then uh, emergency remote teaching, it is implemented in a hurry. So what we are, uh, currently doing right now, and I hope we no longer do this after one and a half year of implementation of online learning. I hope we no longer implement uh, remote teaching, of course. Uh, and for emergency remote teaching, sometimes the resources uh, is not necessarily available. However, in online learning, you have the mindset that, uh, you know, because I'm not going to meet my students face to face, or they're not going to see me physically, uh, so they cannot come to the library. I know that I have to equip them with all the resources so that they can have access to resources. However, because of emergency remote teaching, due to uh, uh, due to a pandemic, for example, um, we did not plan this uh, because we did not plan this. Uh, so some of the resources are not available uh, for our students. So these are, I would say, the very main um, criteria that clearly differentiate between emergency remote teaching and online. So that's this um, if normally, uh, if uh, what you are currently doing, 
um, it offers here, um, you record your, you have your live, uh, live video session, a uh, live lecture session, and then you record that video, and that video you share with your students, that really captures the spirit of um, uh, learning from distance or online learning. Uh, there is this study, uh, this is a very recent study by Brockfell and uh, and, 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 and their colleague in the year 2018. So what they did was in the year 2018, what they did was they have this experiment uh, where they have two lecture halls. Okay, one lecture hall, they have a live, um, live lecture session, live video lecture. And another hall, another lecture hall, they have a recording session. However, in, this set, in these two settings, the students come to the lecture hall physically so they don't really uh, they don't learn from remote only their lecturer is not there okay so one lecture hall with a live video lecture another lecture hall with a recorded video lecture and it was found that um there is not that much difference in terms of effectiveness so it doesn't really um uh, it says the the study them in terms of effectiveness uh, more or less both are the same however when they asked the students which uh, session do they prefer. So they said they prefer 48% 48 48 of them prefer Latin, the one where their lecturer is giving a live session through videos. Uh, however, um, they also say that uh, although they prefer the live video sessions, they also have better appreciation for um, uh, the recording video session okay because they say that the learning atmosphere the ability to concentrate the presence of other students and uh, 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 the acoustic uh, the acoustic way of how the recorded video is being uh, prepared uh, in the video courses so we can say that you know in terms of preference they uh, they prefer live live uh, lecture sessions however they also uh, uh, appreciate the fact that in the recorded video session, you know, because uh, because it is a recorded video session, the lecturer is more prepared, and then and then uh, when the lecturer is more prepared, and then they they can deliver their their lessons more clearly because it is up when you have a recorded video session. So what for students? Um, they we can conclude that they 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 want both of them. Okay, they want the one live session. That's they also want the recorded session. However, it didn't state here, uh, in this study that you know, um, you um, that the students wants a lecture video is in live, but where you have this live session like what we are having now, and then I record this session, and then I share this recorded session to my students. They don't appreciate that. So this is uh this is some kind of uh, things that. Uh, that, that is being found uh, in this study. So, um, if until they still have an online live session and then the recorded live session, you share that online, maybe you want to think again, uh, is, it, is it smart to do that? Um, or you want to have a live session and then prepare separately a recorded video session that you have in mind and you prepare for the recorded video session because uh, I think in terms of pandemic uh, when we have this emergency remote teaching I initially did that however now I no longer do that I I, I do live session as well as I have a recorded pre-recorded video session that I share with my students so that they can review later on because some of my students they cannot attend the live session so they have the uh, the benefit of um, um, looking at the uh, recorded video session However, the recorded video session is not the one that I record from the live video session because most of the time the live video session is full with interaction and I talk to my students. So um, uh, they have difficult time in, you know, uh, um, uh, for fast forwarding or, or you know, in, in um, back to the, to the, to the actual in the content of the, of the, uh, of the lecture. Okay. So, uh, however, I hope by one and a half year of implementation of online learning, I hope we no longer do that. All right, and this is uh, a very interesting article. This is very recent, uh, in eight, on 8th of March, 2021. Uh, this article appeared in Times Higher Education. Uh, it says, it talks about 
um, uh, the role of academics, where it criticizes, uh, you know, we as uh, we as academicians, we are not content creators, um, in the sense that we are not video content creators. So, both of us, we are content creators, like, uh, you know, we make notes, uh, we, we create notes, we write notes, and we prepare notes for our students. So, in this, um, in this article, they were saying that we are not video content creators because, you know, we, we in, in video, in creating videos, actually, in creating content for video, you have to understand the creative part of it. You, you have to understand how to write your script properly. You have to understand uh, when should my face uh, to be, uh, should be there. When should I demonstrate my stuff? When should I? Uh, have uh, only a slideshow presentation. So it requires um, another set of skill that is how you make it interesting. It is also creating videos. So uh, we are not trained to be video content creators. So this is what this article is about. However, it seems uh, moving forward, we have to have this new set of skills so that we can have uh, a, a, a better presentation of video of video video creation. So this is a very nice article. Uh, it, it, it comes again to, uh, you know, it makes us realize um, what kind of um, new skills that we have to acquire moving forward, uh, of course, in teaching online. So um, after all of this learning, of this uh, um, uh, difference, uh, differences uh, um, about online learning and emergency remote teaching. Um, what clearly differentiate uh, antar uh, between online learning and uh, emergency remote teaching? The, the, the very most important part is that for online learning to be meaningful, you have to have these three presence. Okay, um, uh, this is a very advanced framework by uh, Garrison and Akio. Uh, so it is called Community of Inquiry. It says that for a meaningful online learning experience, um, you have to have number one, presence. you have to have effective presence, you have to have cognitive presence. And, and uh, uh, the of these three presence will build a meaningful online learning experience. So in teaching presence, what it says is that if you want to teach online, you have to make, it's not that you have to be physically there. However, you have to make sure that it feels like you are physically there uh, by, by giving instructions, by giving facilitation, so that by designing the learning environment, so it will feel that although you are not there, you are not physically there, your teaching presence is being in fact, number two, if you want to have a meaningful online learning, you have to have effective presence. Uh, what it means by effective presence is that you uh, to engage with your students. You have to um, you know, appreciate uh, their, uh, their responses, uh, give it back to your responses emotionally. So this is uh, what it means by effective presence. Self, um, presence in terms of teaching presence, you have to make your effective presence as well. And uh, number three, you also have to have uh, to create a learning environment where cognitive presence can be felt. What it means by cognitive presence is that you have to design your learning environment so that it encourage exploration. It can triggers question. It can um, uh, it allow uh, it allows interpretation or resolution, knowledge making, knowledge construction. So your learning environment has to be designed in such a way. So it means that if we simply put our resources uh, on the platform, or if we just share our notes, videos, it doesn't really captures the spirit of uh, having a cognitive presence. So you have to design in such a way that, you know, for example, you have a problem and then ask your students to respond to the problem and support them in uh, providing solutions to the problem. So these three elements is make up a meaningful, uh, a meaningful online learning. So you can have online learning, normal online learning. You can also have a meaningful online learning with these three elements being present. So, um, if you want to have a better look at uh, 
you know what um online learning looks like you should first experience online learning so you can go to coursera for example you can go to edx try to enroll in one of the courses you can sign up for the courses and try to observe the following so look at how the course was being structured and how the learning materials are being shared and how it is being constructed online um, what is the role of the instructors did, uh, did the instructor re respond to your questions uh, how did they engage with the students? Uh, what kind of support do they give to the students? And how the students will assess uh, in the course? So try be a student uh, for yourself and then try to experience what it looks like. Then only you can understand, oh, uh, if I were a student, these are the things that I want in my course, however it is missing. Uh, so um, try to, uh, for yourself, experience um, um, learning online uh, if i may share here this is one of the experience that i get so um i i uh, i was given the task to teach a new subject it is called a uh, programming language with python we initially te teach programming language using c++ so uh, because of the change of the curriculum now we have to teach with python so uh, i have to upskill myself so i enroll, enroll in this course called uh, Programming for Everybody, uh, Getting Started with Python. This is offered by University of Michigan. I enrolled this in Coursera. So, and I, I go through the, the modules, I look, uh, I watch the videos and I, I do the readings. Um, I carry out the assessment and things like that. I take the assessment. Uh, so it is a very, uh, um, um, for me, it is a very structured course. And uh, when I ask question, uh, every time that we have a discussion, uh, here, for example, if I go to forum, my question was immediately being answered within, I think, within 24 hours. Uh, the lecturer or, or, or the instructor will immediately get back to me. So if you see here, this course has been offered like, I don't know, for, for two years maybe. However, the maintenance of the course, um, uh, the way the instructor responds to the questions, you know, I if you see here, we still receive feedback from three days ago and seven days ago. Um, and, you know, they support us like wholly, wholeheartedly supported us uh, in giving feedback uh, about any problems that we have. So they also uh, set the grades. Uh, there are discussion forums. There are resources, plenty of, of resources. I can do the notes. I can download the videos. Um, other than uh, I can watch the videos. So um, so this is, uh, I think it's a very good uh, example of uh, online online learning course uh, being designed by uh, this specific university. Um, so try yourself, uh, try for yourself, enroll in, a, in an online course, then you, you will know what it feels like to be a student. If you see that, you know, the instruction is, uh, I don't know where should I cite, uh, where should I submit my assignment? My lecturer asked me to submit assignment, but there is no dedicated place for me to my assignment. So things like that. Okay. So from my observation, we can say that online learning, what it needs to have, number one, it has to be a structured course. It is sequential with very clear learning outcome. It, it, it of course, contains learning materials. Uh, it contains assessment. It allows interaction and interactivity. The instructor gives support and scaffolding. And of course, it can be assessed from distance. So if your course, if your online learning course currently has these elements, then you can say you have an online learning course. Okay. This element, for example, um, uh, giving, um, giving uh, interaction, or giving support sometimes because we have up to like you know uh, 300 students is is quite difficult for us to give support uh, however uh, in my experience uh, what happened to my student was um, i initially give support i give a lot of support during week one or during week two of my lesson and towards the end of the course um, uh, when moving forward to week three week four and and and, and week uh and uh, towards week 14, there are, because, because these students saw that 
we as instructor or we as lecturer, we give support to them. So at the end of the, towards the end of the course, uh, the students start giving support to their friends. However, they, they want to see, uh, I think, I think this is what my, uh, my, how my students see it. They want to see, our students want to see, okay, I want to see first how this, how this lecturer is moderating this course. So, okay, because the way I see it, okay, she actually observes what I'm doing. She actually check, uh, she actually check the work that we do, uh, that we did. So, uh, it seems like, you know, she takes things very seriously. So, so towards the end of the course, uh, my students started supporting each other. So I, I have very minimum, uh, I give very minimum support to my students because uh, they start to um, uh, support each other. So uh, that, is, uh, that, is, uh, that is what uh, I experienced before. However, in my opinion, it is very important to first you yourself start giving support and show that you care and show that all the things that the students do in the e-learning in the in the online learning it matters okay then they can uh, then these student support uh, can come uh, later on uh, online without you instructing them to give their friend support so uh, that is uh, how i can say uh, from my uh, previous experience okay and uh, these these elements captures actually uh, what online learning is to access learning materials, of course, to interact with the content, instructor, and other learners, and to obtain support during the learning process in order to acquire knowledge, to construct personal meaning, and to grow from the learning experience. So online learning is not about sharing of materials, or it's not only about access to materials. However, it is also about interaction with the content, instructor, and with the learners. So this interaction is actually results in uh, 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 knowledge construction. So it's not about sharing of materials only. Okay. Now, that is what online learning is. Okay. Now, for preparing online learning, uh, I will go in depth, uh, the step by step. Okay. So if you see here, um, uh, when you want to plan for online learning, um, I, I usually uh, differentiate that into these four major phases. Uh, number one, we have to plan before online learning session. Uh, number two, we have to plan at the beginning of the online learning session. Number three, we have to plan for during online learning session. And number four, we have to plan for after online learning session. So within these four phases of preparation, uh, there are different to do uh, in these three, uh, in these four different phases. And uh, for example, before online learning session start, we have to first think about uh, the analysis of uh, our students, and then uh, of course we want, we have to analyze what we want to teach today, uh, what is the learning outcome, and then we start designing. Okay, we have to design what are materials that we have to give. Um, uh, how do you want to deliver our online learning session? Is it synchronous or asynchronous? Both. Uh, and then after we have completed the, uh, the process of designing, then only we start developing. So we have to put things in place. For example, we have our notes. So now this is the time for me to upload my notes. Uh, so uh, if I have assessment, so this is the time for me to put in my assessment uh, and uh, prepare the feedback for the assessment. And then you have the time where you actually implement your online learning session. So what you have to do uh, when you are implementing, you have to give support. And then after online learning session, you have to evaluate the learning session and you have to plan what can I do better next time. So all of these things is called as um, is instructional uh, design model. So within these four phases, I divide them into different activities for phases. So we are going to go detail into every phases. Now here, I put here before online learning session. Okay, so before online learning session, as I said, we have to do analysis activity and then we have to do uh, designing activity. So these two activity has to be done 
with uh, before online learning session start. So these two activities are analysis and design. So when you, when you want to start designing what you have to look at, you have to analyze the learner's need, you have to establish the learning goals. I have counted these steps. There are nine steps, basically. So it is quite a lot. However, um, you know, as, as time goes by, you are you you become very, uh, very quick with deciding what are the resources, what are the, what are the strategies and so on. So there are nine steps. Okay, number one, learners needs. Uh, then you have to establish the learning goals that you want to deliver uh, in your next online learning session. You choose the delivery modes. Do you want to deliver that? Uh, synchronously, asynchronously, or both. And then you have to choose the learning strategies. Uh, learning strategies is you plan for how can I best deliver uh, uh, to my teaching and learning. And then you plan your resources, what kind of resources that you have to uh, give to your students. And you design assessment. And then you make final adjustment by making a lines. And then you choose the technology. And then you have uh, you do a little bit of reflection uh, on student learning time. Is it sufficient? Do I do I have to add more, or <clears throat> or am I giving too much? So this is uh, a, a little bit of reflection that you have to do, and try to refine and iterate. So we are going to go step by step again. Okay. So number one, uh, in uh, in analyzing, uh, as I said, the first uh, before online learning session, we have to analyze. So analyze in your next session, in your next online learning session, what is it that you want to teach? Is it something related to knowledge? Is it something related to skills? Is it something related to attitude? Because um, if you want to teach something related to concepts or terminology, uh, so the way you want to deliver your teaching and learning can be different. So if you want to teach something related to skill, something related to step-by-step, then you might think that you know the best way for me to deliver this is through demonstration if you want to teach something about attitudes or values uh, and then you have to uh, think about something like you know i have to teach this uh, with role play they have uh, the students have to do role play because uh, you know your your maybe your your aim is for them to to have uh, to value things uh, that uh, uh, at the end of the lesson so uh, it is important for you to know what uh, domains, uh, learning domains that you teach. Is it knowledge, skills, or attitude? Because it will affect how you are going to deliver your lesson later on. It will affect your uh, strategy. Okay. Then you establish, you write your learning learning goals. So uh, I believe uh, by now, I think uh, most of us are very familiar with uh, writing uh, learning goals using the ABCD rules. Okay, if you want to write your learning goals, you have to start with the audience and then uh, what kind of behavior that you want at the end of the lesson. Uh, do you want to attach that behavior to a certain condition and to what degree that you want your students to be able to learn? So this is an example I put here. Okay, um, at the end of the lesson, students will be able to differentiate between logical and arithmetic Python operators. So this is the behavior that I want them to uh, to be able to um, um, display at the end of the lesson. They are able to differentiate. Uh, to what degree do I want them to be able to differentiate? So this in not only I want my students to be able to differentiate between logical and arithmetic operators, I want them to also know what are the function of logical and arithmetic operators okay uh, and under what under what condition uh, uh, so i want them to understand uh, i want them to be able to differentiate between these operators uh, up to this degree okay under the condition that they can differentiate this in a hypothetical problem okay usually in simple words sometimes we can say that uh, for condition uh, we can also say that uh, students will be able to differentiate between logical and arithmetic Python operators, including their respective functions without the guidance of a teacher, for example. That can also be a condition. Okay. So, however, for uh, in my context, uh, I want them to be able to differentiate between these operators uh, and uh, they have to do this uh, 
in a, in a problem that I give them. So when I give them problem, they are able to differentiate between these operators. So this is what this learning goals. However, we usually, usually when we write our learning goals, we usually stop at behavior. We only include audience and behavior. We hardly include condition and it is also okay. However, I just want you to, uh, you know, to, to make known to all of you that uh, you can also write it in such a way. Usually we start, uh, we, uh, we, we write uh, such, uh, such as students will be able to differentiate between logical and arithmetic Python operators, and then you stop here. So this is this can also be done, okay? Uh, so however, you don't have the condition and the degree lah uh, in your learning ob in your learning objective. Now, now you have your learning goals, okay? Then you choose your delivery modes. Do you want to choose? Do you want to deliver uh, your lesson synchronously, asynchronously, or a mixture of both? Okay, so uh, so when you want to deliver online learning, so you decide on the delivery modes. If you choose to have the synchronous online learning, of course, you have to think about later on, I have to teach live to my students. Uh, and then you have to, uh, your activities also have to be in real time. And then your assessment also has to be in real time. So this is what you have to think about if you choose this delivery mode. If you choose a synchronous delivery mode, uh, then you will have in mind that, you know, I won't be having a live session so uh, with my students, so maybe you will have a pre-recorded video to support your online learning plan. Any activities where students can take as much time as they want because uh, uh, this way that uh, they uh, they can access the activities anytime they want and then maybe assessment is not real time. So this can, uh, you know, when choosing a delivery mode as well, it will affect your whole plan of designing your online learning because if you uh, if you deliver your learning activity is uh, this okay you know that you have limited time because you know that you do some students have uh, have hard time uh, in uh, getting, uh, getting uh getting online so so it affects it you have to choose your delivery modes and you have to choose wisely in according to your um learning goals however maybe in certain topics you were thinking okay because the students are going to be something that is very conceptual or something that is very step by step i did video for that so um so setting up your learning goals will influence the way you deliver your um um, um deliver your lesson later on uh, in online learning mode uh so, dr biha Yes. Biha, can, can I ask you a question? Is it okay for you? Yeah, yeah, boleh. Okay. Uh, Dr. Biha, if let's say uh, just now Dr. Biha mentioned about uh, learning goal. So we have to choose whether we are going to use our, uh, we are going to use synchronous or asynchronous method, right? So means uh, for the learning goal, it is um, necessary for us to set for each unit because uh, some of other unit, it might be we are using a synchronous and some of other unit might be we can use a, a synchronous method. So do we need yeah. to set the learning goals uh, by unit and then we set the the, the method of the um, online learning uh, by unit or how is it? Or we can set the learning goal for the whole uh, courses or we need to oh, divide okay. it into unit by unit? Mm. Okay, in our current context right now, um, um, I believe that we have to change differently uh, uh, reflective to uh, certain learning goals. For example, katakala, this, uh, this week, I'm going to teach something, uh, I want to teach something that is very conceptual. So maybe I, I'm going to have to a little bit of explanation and I want to observe them in real time uh, when they want to do the activity. So this week is going to be uh, full synchronous maybe. Uh, so. Uh, uh, so yes, my answer would be yes. Um, it is better for you. Uh, it's better for us to choose um, our delivery modes with respective learning goals and not a, a, a course learning goals. And then you set, set okay, for this whole course, it's, it's going to be full synchronous. Or for this whole course, it's going to be full asynchronous. So uh, because sometimes some of the topics and, and you know better, uh, that you know better, this is this should be delivered synchronously or asynchronously. And remember, synchronous and asynchronous both are still on. Uh, 
uh, so um, so that will be uh, my answer to your question. Okay. Uh, however, it is it, this can be different from the one that I show you at just now. The one uh, that I show you just now uh, was being delivered uh, asynchronously. Uh, the one uh, the one in Coursera because it was designed. Uh, it was the purpose of the design was that it is for uh, is for anybody to learn. So they have to make uh, the resources available anytime, anywhere, when anybody wants to come in at, at different point of semester uh, or at different point of week. So that's why it is different. Uh, they set that to be delivered. Uh, they set the whole course to be delivered asynchronously. However, for uh, are dealing with our own students, so we can um, uh, specific, for specific learning goals, how I'm going to deliver that. So we can do that uh, with our students. I'm talking about uh, we are dealing with our students, lah, not someone offering a uh, MOOC like the one that uh, they uh, they uh, they deliver just now. Okay. So now, after you have chosen your learning goals, you set the delivery mode. Now you choose your learning strategy again. Um, I I, I mentioned just now why you uh, to know what kind of learning domains that you want to deliver whether it is knowledge, whether it is skills, or it is, is it attitude, influence how you are going to design your instruction and how are you going to deliver your lesson, okay? So, uh, for example, if you want to uh, procedural or step-by-step, -step, uh, it is maybe you can have uh, you can have fun with game-based learning, for example, uh, because, uh, you know, for every correct steps that you do and then you have a reward, or for every incorrect steps that you do, then you can have a punishment. So you can have things like that. Um, um, for something that is a uh, very uh, conceptual or factual, so you should uh, deliver that maybe through uh, problem solving uh, or uh, to problem based learning or project based learning because you want them to clearly uh, create uh, understand uh, the concept uh, on their own rather than you delivering the the knowledge to them. So the um um the learning domains uh what what kind of uh, learning domains that you want to deliver uh or that you want the students to achieve will influence the way you deliver your teaching and learning so i'm not going to go into detail into this there are many learning theories there are many strategies and approaches however you have to fit that as well into what kind of learning domains that you want to deliver to your students then you can design your instructions accordingly okay? So after you have chosen your learning strategies, or you have you have in mind, okay, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to have a problem uh, with my students. I'm going to give them maybe three or four problems and for them to solve, and then uh, you select your teaching materials. Okay, so um, you have to think about what kind of teaching materials can support my students' learning, uh, how teaching materials be delivered, and can the students uh, can the student access my teaching materials when I'm not around, and, and um, why should I choose this teaching material? So these are to select your resources. Now, usually in online learning, uh, the the materials uh, consist of instructional videos, which uh, which is uh, being chunked into very small pieces of videos. And then um, you have uh, a little bit of notes that you can download and then um, try to look for any other materials that, that students can use as a self-study materials. Self-study materials meaning that without you being there, they can understand the content. Okay, for maybe sometimes when we are creating notes, for, for example, uh, in my notes, for example, um, my notes is not a standalone notes, meaning to say that if you do not attend my class, you won't be able to understand my notes. So that is my notes. However, I also have a self-study material uh, where I go through from open educational resources. I look for open source uh, materials uh, because some of these open source materials, they are most of them are self-study materials, meaning to say that I do not have to explain you by reading word by word, you should be able to understand. So my notes is usually not uh, however, I always have a self study materials that I from from uh, uh, this is, um, the online learning materials that you can provide to your students. 
um, when you usually go from uh, the open educational resources, if you are familiar with uh, open educational resources, I will I'll show you. So I usually go to MIT OCW. So they have uh, the online course materials where I can download the notes, where I can download. This is useful even for me. Okay. For example, here, um, I want to look for additional resources or you can go to find, find courses. Okay. If you go by topic, okay. So there are many topics here. You can go to humanities, you can go to energy. So let's say I'm looking for Python. Now, these are the materials available. So if you see here, open educational resources means um, um, you can do five activities. Uh, number one, you can you cannot sell. However, you can get, you can download the materials without asking for consent from the original author. So this is very different than copyright. Uh, however, you have to give attribution uh, to the original author and then I cannot sell the material. And then I have to share again uh, uh, with a disclaimer of CC license. So I will show you an example. For example, um, this one. Okay. So this introduction to computer science and programming in Python is offered in MIT. Okay. By Dr. Annabelle and Professor Eric Dimson. So um, in this course, they have readings, they have lecture slides and Quotes okay, here I can without asking their cons consent as well. So I can download the course material, they have lecture videos that I can download as well. So, um, I always share with my students, however, I have to select, I have, I have to watch all and I have to select which is relevant and which one is not relevant to what I'm, I'm going to take. So, this is one of uh, the resources that I use to get my, my, for my teaching and learning, okay? Other than that, okay, other than MIT OCW, so this is an example of their notes, okay, they always have this license, the CC license down there, okay? Um, other than using uh, OCW notes, I also use open source um, 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 software, okay? So this project, Euler.net, um, is a is a very nice website. Um, it lists down all the problems related to programming. So I can just take the problems and then I can share with my students. Because my my learning objective is that I want my students to be able to differentiate between logical and arithmetic Python operators applied to a hypothetical problem. So meaning to say that I have to give my students problem. So from that problem that I give my students, they are able to differentiate between the operators. So where should I get the problem? Do I have to create one? No, I didn't create a problem. So I look for problems, yes. So I look for problems from this uh, project Euler.net. So uh, I copy paste the problems and then I share that with my, uh, with my students. So the beauty of this uh, open educational resources is that you can copy paste the information without asking for uh, the original author's consent. So provided that you have this logo lah, you see CBY and CSA logo. So um, I get my problems from this website. Uh, and um, on top of that, okay, you can also use uh, many of this website to get your um, resources. Uh, for textbook, sometimes I use Libertex. I look for textbook in Libertex. Uh, and I also go to BC campus. So you will get these slides later on. Maybe you, you want to browse through. So this wonderful textbook. Uh, so this open textbook is that, say, that you can download them, you can receive them, you can do whatever you want, provided that you don't sell them. Uh, sell, uh, the resources and then you have to give attribution to the original authors. 
So this, this is where I get my resources. If I want to get my uh, multimedia, uh, if I want pictures or images, I get them from Wikimedia Commons or Pixabay. So these two websites, for example, they allow us to download uh, photos and images from different resolution, from the smallest resolution to the highest resolution. And some of these photos, they allow us to even sell the images because they are open source. Okay. Uh, I also look for open software. Usually, if a software is an open source software, they have the extension .io. So for my students, uh, I ask students to use streamcat.io uh, to, to write the computer program and, and in, uh, in draw can also be used in our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, managerial activities. For example, if you want to draw a flowchart, you use draw.io. It is a, it is an open source software. You can download uh, into your computer and then you can easily draw your chart in the draw. This is a very interesting software as well. So I always gather my resources from open source first rather than creating from scratch. So if I uh, if I know that okay, so the things that I need, however, I have to go through this material, and then and I do some editing, try to fit that to fit that resources with my content, then I share with my students. Okay, provided that you have to do this copy paste activity only with the disclaimer of like you copying from any resources from the internet. Okay, that is wrong. Uh, if only you can do copy copy pasting activity if only you have this, uh, the material as this logo, right? So that is number three, you gather your resources, okay? So then you design your uh, assessment, okay? So again, when you want to design your assessment, you have to think again, what is your learning goals? So from, from this learning goal, I want to differentiate. This have to differentiate between logical and arithmetic operators, and they have to know the function as well. So I always, what I do is that when I want to write my assessment, when I want to design my assessment, I break down my learning goals because from here, uh, what I actually, what I ask students to know is three things. Number one, uh, because before they want to, before they can differentiate, so they have to first identify lah. So I put there, uh, they have to identify the logical operators, they have to identify the arithmetic operators, and they have to know the function. So uh, I, I am going to test my students. Uh, I'm going to test my students based on these three, uh, three areas. Okay, so maybe in the form of quiz, then you decide, do they have to discuss on that? Do you want them to have a case study on that? So however, this assessment later on has to reflect these three, um, these three learning outcome that I want my students to achieve. Okay, after you have uh, chosen your uh, learning goals and then you do uh, delivery mode, after you choose your delivery mode, you choose your learning strategy. After you choose your learning strategy and then you choose your, um, what was it just now? After, uh, then you gather your resources. After you gather your resources and then you design your assessment. After you design your assessment, then only you choose the technology, okay? For online learning, the technology is, is, is just to make it more engaging. So um, you try to fit in, okay? It's from your learning strategies, uh, how can I best make it even more engaging? Then only you choose the technology. Never put the technology first, only you design, okay, because I want to teach using Facebook, okay? Um, what is it? What is suitable to be taught on Facebook? Okay, don't do that. Okay, so choose your technology at the very end of the process. Okay, now uh, you can always choose some pedagogy wheel. So uh, this is a very nice wheel actually. They put the uh, they put the Bloom taxonomy at the middle of the circle, and then if you want to have an activity related to evaluating, so they suggest uh, what kind of tools related to evaluation you can use. Facebook, you can use iTunes U and so on. So um, so this is just to make things uh, engaging. Okay. Um, so for example, here I 
I put here, if you want to do, if your learning outcome is something related to analyzing, okay, then you, uh, and the activities is about as a, uh, as a uh, um, checking the graph, and then you can use the tool easy chart or poplet. So you can, you can match this uh, later on. Okay, and finally, after you have chosen your technology to make it even more engaging, then you also have to make alignment. Okay, so I always, if you, if you're an expert uh, to, uh, against time, Bessanya, okay, you always come to this final table, je lah, eh? uh, you just put everything in one table and then you uh, uh, put, three. is it relevant or not? So first you put your learning goals and then you have chosen your delivery modes. For example, I want to deliver my uh, lesson uh, asynchronously. Uh, I always put assessment next to learning goals. Because um, then I can clearly see um, my assessment will be measuring what I intended, okay? So uh, I, uh, I have my assessment. Let's say I want to have a quiz on identifying logical operators, identifying arithmetic function. Then I design the activities, okay? So they have to solve problems in groups. And then what are the resources that I want to use? So I have my OER problems. And I have to use my OER notes, page 8 and page 11. Okay. I put the technology and uh, I did not um, I did not join my technology table with my the rest of my table because I, as I said, the technology ha has come has to come at the very last of it. Okay. So now only you try to fit in. Okay, for assessment to even make it more engaging, maybe I want to have the assessment in Socrative. So my activity, because I want to make it more engaging, maybe I can have the solving part in Padlet and then I sum up the lesson using recorded video. So this is how I align. Okay, you have to make adjustment, of course. Okay, see again, uh, look again. Is it aligned with what your uh, intended learning goal is? That is before online learning session. And the bonus part, this is, this is of course, if you have time. Uh, you can do this once in a while. It's good for you to do this once in a while to check again whether are you giving too much online activity uh, or too many assessment, uh, and it doesn't end up with you know uh, you end up with uh, students um, um, doing too many assessment uh, and there is no activity for them before they jump into assessment. Okay, so you can check that with uh, this very useful tool called LearningDesigner.org. Let me show you. I don't do this every time I have my class. However, I do this once in a while only. Okay. Uh, so that's a that's a disclaimer before anybody asks me. Okay. So uh, this learning designer um, is a this is a free tool. Okay. I always use free tool. Okay. Uh, uh, the things in my slide is never a paid tool. So learning designer. This one by UCL. So this learning designer tool is actually helps us to estimate how much uh, our students have spent on specific activity. Okay. So now once we log in, uh, then we have this interface. Okay. You can start. Uh, you can start designing at the designer tab. Okay. Okay. Now you will come across this interface. So you can start the session. Okay, uh, write the name of the session, online learning session one. For example, topic um, topic two, or you can write the full name. How many hours? Is it two hours, for example? Size of the class, I have 30 students. Description, you can put on. The mode of delivery, do you want to have it wholly online? Do you want to have a blended classroom or classroom base or location base? So for this reason, we, we are going to have a wholly online and then you can write the aims and then you can write your learning outcome. Okay, so is it able to differentiate, let's say, differentiate between logical and arithmetic operators, let's say, okay, and then you can start your this is the part where you plan your teaching and learning activities. So let's say first part is, uh, for example, um, introduction. 
to topic and then you want them to read watch and listen or you want them to collaborate you want them to discuss or what so let's say i just want to read watch and listen for 10 minutes with my size class of 30 and then here this is where we decide whether the instruction teacher present or if we cross that teacher is not present okay and then here you decide whether they have to learn uh, they have to learn with teacher present let's say teacher is present and is it online so yes you click on that okay and this is where you click on whether it is i think synchronous or synchronous yeah synchronous or if you don't click that it is it becomes asynchronous so let's say i want to do this synchronous so what kind of attachment i want to have if i want to have resources okay so i i can link my resources so students listen to minutes lecture on topic introduction see okay right and then of course you can add later on you can add here another another lesson so after you have introduction to the the topic you can have for example um activity one okay and then you can write again okay your your um your whole activity during that session let me show you one that i have done okay so what i did was i fit in okay so uh i have uh my learning outcome just now to differentiate between logical and arithmetic operators and their function. So I have five minutes for watching and listening. Uh, and then they have to sit in a whole group and teacher is not present because I said, I said there, um, the delivery mode is asynchronous. And then uh, they have to read on types of arithmetic operators. Also, they have to read on the types of logical operators and the functions. Okay. And then I attach uh, uh, resources. After they have their reading, they have to solve two hypothetical problems via discussion. So they have to do it by to do this by discussing. So here, read, watch, and listen. Here they have to discuss. After they have to discuss, after they have discussed, they have to produce a solution. So have to do that ten in ten minutes, and then discuss ten minutes, and then they have to do assessment. So they have to do practice. How many minutes? 10 minutes. Teacher is also not present. And then lecturer sums up the lesson. However, this is where teacher is present. Okay, because uh, no, this is here. So they have to read, watch, and listen. So here, uh, here, what it did was it estimate, it estimate the number of percent that the students spend in, in different activities. Sometimes we were thinking we give them too many read, watch and listen or too many active activities that they end up reading nothing. Okay, so um, this is uh, this gives us very nice indication of how we design our uh, our lesson. So we can export this design and then uh, it will show this kind of um, distribution. Here, you will write again your, your summary of your lesson. Okay, here, you'll be able to see 15 minutes was spent for reading, watching, and listening. So that is 33% of it. There is no investigation activity being done, uh, meaning to say there is no experimentation and all. Uh, there are 22% of my activity is about discussing, and then they have to do practice, and then they have to produce something. So this is how the activities, uh, the time, and then do I have individual activities? I have whole group activities, okay? Uh, and then they have to do this online, of course, for 45 minutes, then you'll be able to see. Uh, so you'll be able to see how many percent you are present, how many percent teacher is not present, okay? So this is a very nice way of us reflecting on um, how many hours do defense to spend on doing activities. So 
you can do this once in a while, of course. You don't have time to do that all the time. So, however, this is a very last step at, 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 at designing your, your, your lesson before online learning session start. So, uh, so this is the one that I show you just now. Okay. Um, now, that marks the end of the before online learning session. Now, after we have designing, after we have uh, analyzing our students' learning goals, then we start developing. So at the beginning of the online learning session, you put things in place. Now you have your, you have designed your assessment. You have chosen your, you have chosen your technology. Now you set that in place. You make sure the technicalities of it. You make sure the instructions are there. And you also identify your expectation towards student work. If, for example, if, for example, you want your students uh, to produce something, then write clearly. Produce in terms of what? Uh, produce. PowerPoint slide, produce, what is it that you want them to produce, okay? So sometimes because of online learning, because um, the absence of uh, physical communication or maybe live communication, uh, it is very easy uh, for students to have miscommunication or misinterpret your message. So make it very clear to your students what do you expect from them, okay? If you, uh, sometimes we ask our students to discuss, okay? Uh, and let's say for example okay i give you 10 minutes to discuss and then after 10 minutes you expect them to come up with a very nice solution with a very nice product of discussion when in fact you did not give them time for them to prepare for the production of solution okay discuss is one thing now after discussing now i have to produce uh, an output so you didn't give me time for me to to produce an output so however you expect me to come up with a very nice output so um, that's why uh, reflecting on time, just down here, okay? I give 10 minutes for discussion, 10 minutes to produce a solution. So it make, you make it very clear to your student what do you expect from them at the beginning of the online learning session, okay? Now, this is during online learning session, okay? If you choose to carry out your online learning session asynchronously, now you have your learning goals you have your learning goals and then because it is asynchronous then you tell your students okay i want you to uh, i want you to read on this material so uh, this is the time that you estimate for your students to read the materials of course because it is asynchronous um, they can do this maybe longer than 10 minutes because uh, it is not real time okay they might take 20 minutes however this this time reflects on the time you estimate the students take to digest uh, the resources that you give. Okay, so you expect they can read within ten minutes and then they are done, and then uh, you expect them to have a twenty minutes. Uh, they have a discussion, so you expect this discussion by twenty minutes they should be able to come up with a solution lah. Okay, and then uh, you say that okay after after that uh, you expect them to uh, to check their answers. Okay, uh, maybe. And then you expect this can be done within 10 minutes. And then you have a summing up lesson. So this is during online learning session. Now I put here the dotted line, the yellow dotted lines. Uh, this is where you give them support. Okay. Of course, support has um, the good support has to be given uh, throughout the learning session. Lah, but at least at least give support during uh, during the asynchronous session. Uh, the one that I have uh, dotted in line here during the activity of this uh, um, 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 uh, to, um, uh, during the activities it is it is highly recommended you have your uh, support you give your support and you give your scaffolding so that you can direct the students discussion or the students uh, knowledge interpretation um, towards the the correct direction okay and then if you have your online learning synchronous session okay you can have in such a way, for example, for the first two minutes, um, you down, uh, upload the materials, you share the materials, you share your briefing, uh, two minutes, and then you have 15 minutes. Uh, you have a breakout room for discussion, for example, and then you have 10 minutes for discussing answers and uh, a little quick, quick of assessment uh, within five minutes, and then you have a conclusion. Now, if you want to have your online learning session synchronously, 
Okay, I highly recommend for you to make full use of whatever tools that is you are currently using. For example, right now we are using WebEx. Now in WebEx, you have the share screen function, you have the breakup room function, you have the whiteboard function, chat function, and the transfer host function, as well as the poll function. Now, when you want to have your activity online, try not to divert the students into different platform. For example, okay, now I want you, you tell your students, okay, now I want you to have discussion, have discussion in our LMS system or have discussion in Padlet, for example. So don't do that, okay? If you are conducting your session synchronously online, make full use of whatever features available on the video conferencing tool. Okay, if you are using Microsoft Teams, make full use of the features in Microsoft Teams. If you are using WebEx, full use of features available in WebEx. If you are using, what else, Zoom, make full use of whatever feature available. Okay. However, if you are carrying out asynchronous, this is okay because they can have, they can have their own sweet time through the materials. However, if you are using, uh, if you are planning on delivering your online learning session synchronously, make full use of whatever features is there at the video conferencing, uh, at, at the video conferencing tool. Okay. Now, after online learning session, okay, of course. Uh, check again. Did you achieve the intended learning outcome? How did the students interact? Did the students meet your expectation? What works and what went wrong? And what technical expertise you need to improve? Because sometimes you were saying, that, oh, I myself, I don't know how to how to do this. Okay, so maybe you, you can reflect on that and then you can improve that uh, the next time you want to have your online learning session. So this is after online learning session, do a reflection, do an evaluation about your own teaching and learning session so this is um this is a sharing from uh, my quick reflection student um, i asked my student to give reflection two weeks in a row like every two weeks uh, uh, initially during my when i start uh, the online learning uh, at the beginning of the semester so i tell them you can fill in this um this comment voluntarily if you do not want and then you can you you can opt to not uh, filling in the responses um, the reason being is that um, usually students if they really have something to say they will fill in your uh, uh, your comment section uh, they will have something to say however if there is, there are students if you force them into in, into you know making comments on your teacher and learning if they don't have anything to say and then you know you won't get a, a very a valid response lah, uh, to your to your comment section. So this is um, my uh, the responses that I received from my student. Um, the thing that I like that I highlight here is that my student is telling me that the way I explain things is faster than their internet connection. Uh, it says here, you are way too fast in explaining things compared to my internet connection uh, because I talk too fast. Now they said that uh, the way that I talk uh, is faster than their internet connection. So, okay, then I, I take back this comment. Okay. Uh, and I have another comment uh, asking for me to slow down a little bit because they have hard time catching me, catching me up. Okay. Uh, so these are some of the things that, uh, that I received uh, earlier on in my online learning uh, session. Okay, and I also highlight here because um, recorded video are being recorded by topic, so it make them feel easier to understand the topic. Because I chunk my video sometimes one topic, I have up to eight videos. Later on, if I get the opportunity, I will show you. I have up to eight videos to explain one topic. Uh, so because I recorded that like very 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 small bit of it, because some of my students they have problem with internet connection. So say that um, because uh, if I have too long, video is too long, they have hard time, you know, if they want to fast forward or if they want to reverse the video, uh, they say that they have a very hard time kat mana tadi, eh? dah tertinggal ah, macam tu. So, so sometimes uh, it, it also affects the way the, the loading time of the video because it is too long and it takes some time to load video. 
So I record that into very small chart videos. There are videos with very, uh, uh, with two minutes. There are videos with four minutes of duration. Uh, so I have a, a plenty of that small chunk of videos. So apparently they, they, they like that, uh, a, a small chunk of videos. And then they asked me to slow down a bit. So the next week, uh, I slow down a bit and, and I get whether, whether this is okay or not. This is new. Uh, this is from this, I think, last two weeks. Okay. Uh, I asked uh, one of my students, uh, how was the lecture going? Uh, so they say that they want ex more explanation besides than watching the recorded video. I gave them recorded video. Also, actually, have a live session. Okay. And I asked a live session. Uh, apparently, my student says, Continue live class for us. They want more live session uh, other than the recorded video that I have provided to them. So, um, so, uh, so they, they demand, they want both. Okay. Now I end up, I was telling my student, what happened was that when you are listening to my video, what I'm going to explain immediately after this is the same thing that you have listened to in my video. And they say, it's okay, doctor. Uh, you can just repeat things. I uh, we don't mind. So uh, they they still want me to explain again things that I have explained in my recorded video. Then okay, um, for that point on, I I I have to have a live live class other than recorded video. They say that my recorded video is useful explanation. However, when they want to learn, they want my live class. So so I have my live class as well as recorded video as well. Okay. Uh, and then they also say that they like it because the duration video is not too long. Um, and then, um, so they like it that it is not too long lah because uh, it takes longer time apparently for them um, to listen to uh, videos that is being recorded with a longer duration. Okay, um, I think maybe if you have time after, uh, after doing your reflection uh, at the end of your uh, online learning session, you might want to do some CQI, uh, your continuous quality improvement with your online learning. Okay, uh, you might want to think about what you want to change your online course. And then you might want to think about what is good about online course, uh, about your online course and what is lacking. Okay, because, uh, because I didn't have my book here today, uh, I usually share with you my book on designing online learning. It is a green colored book. I forgot the name of the, um, the, the author, but it's a very, uh, a very useful book for me in designing an online course. I think I will share later on with uh, Dr. Azra, um, uh, the title of the book. Um, it says here, it says in the book, um, these are some of the quality standards for an online course. First, you need to have your course introduction. You need to have your course competencies, your outcome your instructional resources and materials, your strategy has to be clear. Are you, are you demonstrating things? Are you, um, are you delivering problem-based learning? Okay. You have to have your assessment and feedback, not only assessment, have to give feedback as well. You have to have your presence. If you remember, I mentioned earlier on for meaningful online learning, you have to have teaching presence, cognitive presence, effective presence. Your course has to be structured. Your course instruction has to be very clear. Your course workload has to be very equal. Uh, so you can do this using the learningdesigner.org website just now. You can somehow see um, whether you are giving too much or you're giving too little or you are just doing well. Uh, the use of technology, not, not too much. Your technology has to, uh, you have to remember the technology is, it should be to ease, to ease your teaching and learning process and, and it, it, uh, most of the time, it is used to make teaching and learning more engaging. And then you give your learner support through scaffolding. Okay. So these are usually, if you have these properties in your online course, and then you're good to go. Uh, then you are clearly um, uh, embracing uh, the, the nature of online learning and not merely, you know, delivering things because I have to do this online. Finally, my take home message, number one, online learning is absolutely not the same and compared to emergency remote teaching, okay, reflect again, what are you currently doing right now? Are you practicing emergency remote teaching or are you conducting online learning? Okay, and of course, if you see just now, 
we have four phases of planning online learning. Number one, before online learning, at the beginning of online session, during online learning session, after online learning session. So, during these four phases of online learning planning, it takes more effort and time to plan for online learning, especially in designing, which is before online learning session start. Number three, scaffold all the time, give support to your student all the time, give support in terms of feedback, give support in terms of guiding them uh, towards the right direction, and be aware of your time. Remember not to give too much and not to give too little, and uh, as much as you can, try to not skip reflection. Um, have a one minute uh, of thinking um, what went wrong today, what was good today, uh, so that you can improve uh, the next time you plan your online learning session with your students. I think that's and that ends up my um, sharing session. Uh, thank you for listening. So I invite um, if you have any question um, to me, maybe. Um, okay, thank you, Dr. Biha, for the detailed explanation about uh, planning online learning. Um, okay, uh, I would like to see, is there any question in the chat room? Uh, okay, um, Dr. Aisha said, give me more example or more to the meaning we have to show them. How to let them show the more, not we are the one who are supposed to do that. Okay. I think this is the question, I think. Give more example or more to them, meaning uh, we have to show them how to let them show the more, not we are the one who are supposed to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, hello. Um, I, 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 I recently, I recently, I think on, on Monday, I, I supervise uh, my student teacher uh, in practical. Um, this is what I actually I I also tell my 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 student my practical teach uh, my practical student um, when you want to um, um, ask your students to do more rather than we giving them more um, it start it always starts with question you always have to start with question when you give them question and then they have to answer when they have to answer then they are giving you more always trigger them with question. Um, um, what I uh, what I told my student the other day was that um, this 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 uh, this practical teacher uh, she wants to teach something about values. Um, what 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 are the values on uh, something about values? I, I can't remember. So rather than rather than um, rather than asking the students what are the values, um, she straight away show. So these are five values that you need to have. Okay, so um, because uh, I asked her, why not you ask your student uh, what kind of values, and then you write, you write, uh, you write their feedback uh, in front, so that you know students have a sense of you know my teacher appreciate my feedback, and and that my feedback matters. So always, uh, so how can you do that? You always have to ask question. Um, always have to ask question to your student. I did this with my student. Uh, initially, when I asked question online, uh, nobody, nobody respond. Nobody keeps quiet. Uh, everybody is keeping quiet. So of, of course, they, they, they won't like to respond. So what I did was uh, I asked question um, because I know that they don't want to talk. So I have, uh, I use this tool. I forgot what is the name. So they, they can respond live. And then I can see the name of the person responding. So I put the question, okay, now, because you do not want to answer my question verbally, now you can answer my question in the written form. Okay, so I wait. So I saw the name, so I, 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 I share the screen for everybody to see. So everybody can see uh, who is writing what. So in, in front of the screen. So um, after I think I, I did that kind of activity at the beginning of my lesson, so uh, the kind of question that I usually ask my student is that what did we learn last time? So they have to write what did we learn uh, before. So uh, so they have to write. They write what they have learned before uh, because they never want to you know answer answer me verbally. Really? So uh, yes, after three weeks that I do that, no one came up to me. Doctor, pernah lah doctor nak tulis boleh tak doctor tanya je pasal kami jawab. Uh, so. 
So now they know the pain of, you know, it is easier for you to just directly respond to me rather than you like you have to type and then you have to open and then you have to look. Have I did I do that correctly? So um, kan lagi senang you cakap je kan. I dengar and then I can respond directly. So um, that is what I did. Uh, initially, um, initially they 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 are reluctant in responding. However, after week three and week four, and they, they know already the the lecturer will be asking, and then my 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 as well I jawab je lah senang cepat sikit boleh lalu sesi tu. Ah, uh, so uh, so that is that is what I did. That is what I can share. Um, uh, uh, so um, after some time, they uh, they get used to answering you, ah, uh, because they have they have moved over the barrier of talking to my lecturer. Uh, during the first week kan, second week dia mungkin tak biasa lagi dengan kita. Mm-hmm. So after Betul. three, uh, third and fourth week, uh, dah okay dah. Uh, so, so, um, so then uh, what, then I have, I put less effort lah in asking. Sebab biasanya when I ask and then they can direct uh, uh, and then you ask. So that, that that's how I do it. Okay. I hope it applies to Thank the you, rest uh, of the most of our uh, stereo. <laughs> Thank you Dr. Aisha for the question and thank you to Tabiha for your answer. Uh, it might be other participants. Um, do you have any question? If you have question, you just unmute your microphone or you can text, uh, you can type in the chat room. But I have a question to Dr. Tabiha. Saya ni selalu banyak yeah. soalan kalau jadi moderator. So, um, saya nak tanya dengan Dr. Tabiha. Just now you mentioned about feedback, giving feedback. So uh, it might be you can uh, you can give a suggestion uh, what type of feedback that we can give to our student because uh, some of uh, the lecturers they have many students in class and some of the lecturers they have a small number of students in class. So how uh, how can you give us the suggestion? It might be a suggestion for us to give feedback to students. Okay, a feedback ni dalam education ada dua jenis feedback. Satu Hi. adalah um, um, procedural feedback, structured mm-hmm. bukan procedural feedback dengan structured feedback kat sebelah saya. Mm-hmm. Uh, dan feedback ni uh, adalah sebenarnya um, uh, dia berbeza dengan scaffolding. Dia, mungkin saya kalau saya cerita scaffolding, scaffolding contohnya adalah um, ki, bila pelajar tanya kita, kita tak jawab terus dia punya jawapan. That is what it means by scaffold. However, we guide them towards getting the answer. Contoh kalau ditanya doktor macam mana eh, saya nak draw flow chart uh, yang dalam aktiviti tu tu. Okay. You don't give them. Okay. You don't tell them. Okay. You nak draw flow chart tu macam ni. Uh, you don't tell them that. However, you tell them. Okay. You cuba tengok baca dekat dekat buku teks muka surat tiga. Cuba tengok kat situ. Macam mana dia draw flow chart. That is the way of you giving scaffold. Uh, so uh, that kind of feedback itu yang kita bagi kepada pelajar. Jangan bagi uh, direct direct answer. Uh, that is what we call as scaffolding or giving support. Mm. So that kind of feedback that you should give. Um, dan uh, kalau if not pun, uh, kita bagi hint. Macam tu tadi kita bagi hint. Uh, feedback in the form of hint. Kita boleh juga bagi feedback in the form of um, kita minta dia tanya kepada kawan. Contohnya, um, apa tu uh, kita tanya kalau dia tanya kepada kita, kita kata bahawa cuba you tengok jawapan Uh, uh, jawapan yang uh, kawan kamu yang dia tadi bagi. Kamu rasa jawapan dia tu betul ke salah? Ha, macam tu. Uh, so uh, so this is the kind of feedback yang kita kena, kita sendiri sebelum nak feedback kita kena ada high, higher order thinking sikit jugalah mm-hmm. untuk supaya macam jangan sampai kita terbagi jawapan terus yes. pada pelajar. Uh, so that uh, so that they in giving feedback, uh, it supports them. Uh, however, they have to do that on your own. Ha, itu antaranya lah. Kalau boleh baca sebenarnya ada jenis-jenis scaffolding, types of scaffolding. Uh, itulah sama ada dengan cara memberi hint uh, ataupun cara lain adalah memberi soalan balik semula. Ah ha, Bila dia tanya kita, kita tanya balik dia. Uh, kalau kamu draw macam ni, uh, ni betul ke salah? Kenapa yang ni salah? Ah ha, Macam tu. Tanya balik semula balik. Itu pun memberi support juga atau memberi feedback juga. Ha, so, uh, so do you think this is correct? Why do you think this is wrong? If you do it this way, what will happen? Ah ha, Macam tu. Uh, you can also give it back in the form of question. Uh, macam mm. So, um, these are some of the things that um, kita boleh gunakan lah. Bagi feedback atau point them towards getting the answer dengan cara uh, apa tu, uh, tunjukkan hasil kerja kawan-kawan. Uh, so, then, uh, then kawan-kawan tu pun tahu 
Oh, like, ni jawapan saya ni. Jadi, uh, so I better write, I better do this uh, properly. Uh, so, those are the things. This may ada satu lagi adalah memberi feedback. Satu lagi bila kita beri feedback. Uh, ada satu lagi elemen dengan feedback yang kita kena ingat. Iaitu prompt. Prompt feedback. Feedback tu tak boleh nak lambat. Like dah 8 hari baru nak bagi feedback. Mm-hmm. Or, or macam budak tu dah tanya hari ni. Mm-hmm. Uh, macam tu lah 8 hari baru nak respon uh, Macam tu jadi, jadi dia akan Demotivate pelajar Untuk tanya kita soalan lagi Sebab dia tahu nanti Macam Alah nanti tak reply punya uh, Macam tu Reply pun lambat uh, Macam tu uh, Jadi feedback ni juga ada, Kena bagi cepat lah uh, Boleh bagi lambat uh, Macam tu Kalau nak bagi cepat Kalau nak bagi lambat pun Dah bagi awal-awal pelajar Bahawa saya akan bagi feedback ni Lambat sedikit uh, Tapi saya akan bagi feedback so, Feedback saya uh, Macam tu Uh, it's just uh, a sign uh, to our students that you know I know that you are asking me something however I need some time to to get back to you okay. macam tu. So mungkin saya boleh nah. um, so Dr. Biha so I can say that uh, in giving feedback so we have to relate to the KSA like you mentioned the knowledge skill and attitude it is um uh, The, the competence. So I, I can say that when you, we are giving feedback to students, we have to relate to the knowledge, skill and attitude. It is when we are giving feedback to mm. students. Um, boleh juga macam tu sebab knowledge, um, knowledge ataupun skills ataupun attitude itu lebih kepada berguna untuk kita menentukan kita punya learning strategy kita macam mana. Nanti mm. kita nak mengajar macam mana. Mm. Ah, tu mm. yang kita kena tahu. Uh, apa tu kita nak mengajar tu nanti, konten uh, yang kita nak mengajar tu adalah berkaitan knowledge ataupun berkaitan skill ataupun berkaitan attitude kalau macam attitude mungkin uh, tu lah saya kata tadi mungkin kena ada penghayatan penghayatan kena ada role ada role play jadi dia bolehlah menghayati attitude yang kita nak ajar takkan kita nak mengajar attitude tu tapi nak mengajar secara lecture uh, macam itulah uh, so uh, knowledge uh, skills and attitude uh, it actually uh, more related to how you are going to deliver your teaching and learning later on uh, Alright. Okay, so um, does anyone have a question to Dr. Biha? Because we still have a time. Okay, because I think Dr. Biha um, tell us a details explanation about uh, planning design, planning uh, online learning. So, Dr. Azra, is there any question you want to ask uh, Dr. Biha? No. So I think I should conclude the workshop okay for today. I uh, thank you very much uh, for insightful and Im- informative sharing from Dr. Bihar. Okay um so uh, I really hope that all participants um able to use this uh, sharing in order to plan your online learning and then at the same time uh, you can get inspirations in, in order for you to conduct uh, your teaching and learning uh, for this semester as well as uh, next semester so uh, without uh, without delay uh, i would like to uh, mention that we will have the workshop for the next week on 31st uh, april 20, uh, 2021 entitled creating rubrics for alternative assessment at 10 a.m via webex platform we will uh, we will be with uh, our speaker doctor if i'm not mistaken doctor doctor apa eh doctor doctor apa ya azra Dr. Rohaya. Dr. Rohaya from U2M as well. So it might be Dr. Biha know uh, uh, about uh, Dr. Rohaya. So uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, participation in this workshop. Thank you, Dr. Biha. We'll see you again. Selamat uh, berpuasa. Thank you. Kepada Dr. Dr. Biha. All right. Thank you to everyone. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.